Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench, we have a very old diver watch. Uh, you can see that's a uh, Erin. It's uh, not in very good condition. Uh, the, the, the glass is pretty scratched. Oh, look. <laughs> the, the bezel just came off. Wow. Oh, looks like somebody tried to glue it. It looks like some glue underneath. I don't see any spring. So yeah, we definitely have something uh, something wrong on this watch. So what we're going to try to do is uh, to restore this watch and uh, give it like this uh, this old look. Because yeah, I see the potential in the watch, but you see like it's... Uh, but the good news is like the, the movement is working. Like you can see the second end, the range second end is, is moving. We saw the date. The date was jumping. So that's good. Um, and you can see at the back, on the case back, waterproof with a, a diver. Okay, so when I put it on a time grapher, you can see the result on a time grapher is very bad, like amplitude of 169, bit error of uh, 2.9. Um, the time actually, which is losing, is like yeah, 10 seconds a day. That's not bad, but the amplitude is really low. So you definitely need a, a service on this, uh, on this watch. Okay, so let's open it and see what we can find inside, which kind of movement we have. Okay, yeah, the movement, we can see the movement is beating. It's not the most beautiful movement that I uh, worked on, but uh, yeah, you can see the ring there, very dirty. So he did his, he did his job, yeah, protect the movement from uh, dust and, uh, and water. I don't see any sign of rust or any, like the movement obviously is not clean, clean, but it's not too bad. Just remove this ring around so I can remove the winding stem there. I'm just pushing on a, on a pusher. Yeah, so let's just turn it around and we should be able to take out the movement out of the case. There we go, perfect. Look at this beautiful dial. We can see some spot on the, on the dial, but I, I like it. Yeah, I love these hands and I love the orange accent on the, on the dial. This is really nice. We can see the winding stem is, is rusty, so that's, uh, that's not really good, but uh, we, we can address that very easily. Just going to remove the hands with my Presto tool. And we're gonna release the dial fit screw there. Just release this beautiful dial, like I said, and just gonna store it away in a safe place. Just when while we work on the watch, we don't damage we don't damage the dials. So I'm just going gently around, you see, with my tool there, just lifting the dial. Okay, so now the dial is out. So obviously this uh, this watch has a complication, which is a date. So what we're gonna do now, just to get access to the Canon pinion. We're going to remove the date mechanism. Just removing the date, the plate, which is uh, holding everything on top. Uh, some uh, up. That's a jumping, that's a driving mechanism for the date. So if you like the video, it will be, I would be very thankful if you can uh, subscribe to the channel, click on a like button and on the bell icon so you will get notified. I try to put a video like uh, once a week. So yeah, if you like the video, just subscribe and you will get notification if you click on the bell icon for when I put uh, my next video. So thanks in advance. Okay, so now I just removed the Canon pinion. I'm just going to release the power from the, from the watch by holding the click there and just gently unwinding the crown between my fingers. There we go. And you can see the watch came to a stop very quickly. So probably sign of uh, friction and uh, dried up grease or oil in the mechanism. So we're gonna, that's the purpose of disassembling everything. We're gonna remove all these parts and clean them. You can see the, the movement as well is uh, FE 140, so France Ebosch uh, 140. So if you want, it was quite of a, a generic uh, manufacturer of movement. Like if you want today, like you have ETA, um, this, this was, uh, as well, one of, uh, manufacturer for, for cali for watch caliber. Okay. I'm just removing all the parts there. Just uh, removing the screw there for the train of wheel bridge. We should have all the wheels underneath. And obviously every time I'm disassembling a watch, I'm just looking, uh, what I can find underneath if there is anything, uh, anything wrong or anything broken. Just removing there all the wheels from the train of wheel. We remove the crown wheel and the ratchet wheel. Just checking the pivot as well on each wheel if it's not bent or if it's not damaged. 
just checking the play here. Just see if the, the ball harbor, ball assembly, if there is any play. So side check and uh, end check, just lifting it up with a piece of peg wood to see if there is no not uh, too much movement there. But it looks good, to be fair. So that's perfect. I'm just removing this small pinion on the other side, which is friction mounted and uh, which is keeping one wheel in place. So I had to remove this with a Presto tool and now I can release this wheel. Okay, removing the click there. So far, so good on this assembly. We did not see anything uh, very bad. Or... So that's a, that's, a, that's a pretty good news. And we have this very small bridge here which is just uh, keeping the barrel assembly in place. So I bought, uh, like this watch was uh, bought uh, by somebody on, on eBay and uh, I'm fixing this watch uh, for, for him. So I hope I can, uh, I can, you see the watch was like, the, the running was not good, obviously. So that's the first point. And on the outside, the aesthetic of the watch was not great. So... Let's see if we can uh, if we can improve as well. After first, I like to work on the movement, and uh, we will see what we can do on the case, on the crystal, obviously, and the bezel that was fully disassembled and fully uh, fully broken and not staying in place. Looks like it's missing one part. So I don't know what I'm gonna do, but yeah, I will have to find a solution to to fix this. Yeah. Okay, this part is weird. You have a little spring under, underneath this wheel, so I never saw that before. So I was just checking how it stay in place. So that I know when I will reassemble the watch, I will understand that. And that's what's important. You need to understand what's how, how the mechanism is working if you want to put it back together. And every time you see something different, just take your time and just think like, what what is it doing? And when you understand, you see the spring has just jumped. It didn't go very far because I always, with a plastic stick, make sure they don't fly far away. If they fly, just. Okay, and the last few parts, and we saw again the winding stem, which is pretty rusty, but that's easy to change. Okay, cannon pinion and crown wheel there, out of the way. Just going to take the jewel hole with, uh, with a piece of peg wood just to remove, like, uh, like every time, the, the dried up oil or grease, just to make sure it's, the cleaning process after in a machine is, uh, is uh, more efficient. Oop. That's a jump, yeah? Did not go very far, but that's the first time, actually. We're just removing the spring on the top. The the jewel inside just jumped. I was lucky that it didn't go very far, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's strange, yeah? Okay, just put back the balance on the, on the mechanism for, for cleaning before putting, because that's a safe place to keep it. And the same thing, I'm going to remove the jewel on the, on this side as well, the, the balance jewel. Just to make sure as well, like everything get clean and the oil which is uh, in the jewel there get uh, clean very well in a, in a cleaning machine. So let's see if this one wants to jump. I hope he's not going to do like the other one. Is it giving this one? Yes, he does. Whew. He did not jump. I just grab it with a bit of Rodico there. There we go. That's, that's a way to do it normally. Okay, so let's disassemble the barrel assembly. Just opening it. Just removing the lid. And we have the spring inside, which looks good, actually. It looks like uh, not dirty. No, nothing special inside. It looks new, almost. Like, that's weird. That's very strange, like, but yeah. But we saw the amplitude was very bad, so... Yeah, it's, uh, but uh, the main spring looks pretty decent, yeah, to be fair. Okay, so I fully took it out. I'm just picking, as well, the rest of the jewels, just to make sure... Everything get clean. Cleaning the pivot of the wheel there with a, a special uh, polisher. And all the parts are going to go in these baskets before to put them in a, in a cleaning machine. And we are going to clean the, the parts in different stages. So first we are going to clean it and we'll have two wrenching stages and the last one we will dry the parts. And during the cleaning, I would like to use this opportunity to thank my patron and to tell you that I have a patron page. If you want to support the channel, you can go on my Patreon and subscribe to one of the plan. This will uh, motivate me a lot and as well I found my project because yeah, this uh, video takes a lot of time and uh, as well you need a lot of equipment to put this video. So if you want to support my, my channel, you can go on Patreon and subscribe. And I would like to thank Shelby, Jan, Rude, Christian, Corne, Alan, Swami, David, Ted, Tony, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim and Gregory. Thank you so much guys for supporting me already. 
I would have never imagined I would have so many people supporting me. So if you want to join the group, please go on my Patreon. You can find a, a, a link down in the description and uh, subscribe to, to my Patreon account. So thank you. Okay, so the parts are dried up there and clean. So we can start the, the reassembly. So first we're gonna reassemble the, the mainspring. I'm going to use, we saw the mainspring was in, in good state. It was like in good shape, not, not too dirty, nothing broken. So I'm just rewinding it there with a, a tool, for, like a special tool from version to rewind your mainspring. And we are gonna pull it back. There is always this end, depending like, uh, there is this hand that always difficult to go. And when it goes, okay, I'm releasing the tension there. Bring it back in the last tiny bit. There we go. That is good. I can remove now the handle just with a, a pair of tweezers that I'm sliding underneath just to make sure the mainspring we stay inside. And I can release just very slowly the handle. Just checking if everything looks good. And yeah, you can see the mainspring is fully wound inside and ready to go back. But first, just going to put a couple of drops of grease and pop the mainspring go back in a, in a barrel. Just reassembling the rest of the mainspring barrel there with the barrel arbor. Obviously, we're going to oil and grease everything. If you want to see the description and uh, of the tool that I'm using, and as well, a lot of people ask me questions about the grease uh, that I'm using, you, I put some links down in the description with uh, obviously not all the tools because you will have to have a, a very, very big list. Um, but uh, some of, of the main tools that I use and uh, grease and oil that I use. So if you want to have a look, you can go in the description and um, you will find uh, all this information. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is gonna do some uh, epilem treatment on some of the parts that need to be uh, treated in epilem. So I do the pallet fork and the escape wheel and the jewel as well from the balance assembly. Just putting in this bottle, this special bottle, because epilem is something that evaporates very quickly and is very expensive. So you need to use these special bottles that uh, will reduce the evaporation um, with like a very thin section in the middle, obviously to have less contact with, uh, with hair. So when the epilam is done, I'm just cleaning the pivot point of the escape and the pallet fork. And we'll have the two jewels. You see that they're not the same thickness. One is thicker than the other. So that's very important. Always the thicker, the thicker jewels go on, uh, on the balance side and not on the calendar side. Because obviously your watch is, when it's on your wrist, most of the time, is going to be on a, on a dial side, yeah? And uh, the jewels, uh, which is on the balance side, is going to be underneath. So the weight of uh, the, uh, the shaft, if you want, that you have on a, on a balance assembly, is going to be more on a, on a balance side. So that's why you have a thicker jewel, where you have the, the, uh, the balance staff that can rest because, like I say, by gravity, it's going to rest more on the, on the, on the balance side than on, on the dial side. Okay, so putting a drop, of a drop of oil in the middle of the jewels, and when it's done, putting the chaton back on and capturing, if you want, the drop of oil in between. Just turning it over. There we go. You see, we can now put it back in the balance. So, like I said, that's, that's the side where you will have the jewel with the thicker thighs. Just closing the spring there with my uh, tweezers, which, which is acting, like I said, that's a, a shock spring if you want, just to, just to make sure the balance staff doesn't break if, you're, if you have a shock on your watch. Do the same thing on the other side, just putting the jewel, closing the spring. There we go, perfect. Make sure it's in full in position. And just with her, some hair, just checking if it's rotating. Uh, that looks very good. And I always check as well the hair spring, if it's in good shape, like if it's flat, uh, if it's moving correctly. But here it was looking perfectly fine, so nothing to do. So we're gonna reassemble now the movement, starting by the barrel arbor. Remember we check the, the play, if it was no play. So should be okay, should be good. I'm just checking again. Tiny movement, but I think it should be fine. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not a big, a big movement. I saw a lot worse, so it doesn't necessarily, necessarily to reduce the, the hole. So I will leave it like this. 
just placing the screw there to secure the, the bridge. And again, some oil because you yeah, have friction and wear between uh, parts metal to metal is your enemy. So that's why we're going to use a lot of different oil and a lot of grease on uh, the parts that are in frictions. Okay, just putting the click and now we can put back the train of wheels. One wheel by one wheel, placing them in their respective jewels. Yeah, that's it. And this one looks, yeah, it was the wrong way around. So just put it the right way around. That's it. Now put it in the jewel there. And the last wheel just placing in place. And where it is, we should be able to put back the last one, which we need to lubricate, just put some oil there on the shaft before I introduce it into the center hole. Perfect. That looks good. And you see the movement as well. It looks quite clean. And we can place the bridge on top and we're going to align all the wheels as well. Like we did on the bottom, we're going to do the same thing on the top with each jewels, which is this uh, pink color uh, circle that you see on the, on the bridge there. Yeah? And okay, now I'm just going to align each single wheels just very slowly until they all fall in place and we can secure them with the screws. That's the first and there is a second, uh, second screw there. Perfect. So like I said, yeah, the movement actually looks quite clean. It was not that bad when, he, when, uh, when I took it out of the case, but uh, it looks good there. Putting back the crown wheel now with this uh, little ring that I need to put first. And this, uh, this screw there, remember, center screw is river threaded. So you see that now I'm turning the opposite direction what I would do normally. So always be careful with this screw when there is only one which is right in the center. Placing the ratchet wheel. There we go. Now we just sit down. Perfect. In place. I can secure with the screw. Like, like, uh, and you see now I try to turn, it's blocked. Like, look like the, yeah, the click is blocking the, I cannot wind it. So yeah, I probably put the click the wrong way around. So we try to do it and just turn it. Voila, it was upside down. Just placing back the spring there that just moved. I'm going to screw it in place again. And let's see if I can wind the watch because I couldn't wind the watch actually. Uh, it was it was it was blocked. Yeah, there we go. That's the way. That's why. That's what you want to do it. That's what you want to do it. So that's good. Perfect. Let's move to the die side and we're gonna assemble the keyless work. So just putting some grease there on the pinion, which is a part I see a lot of friction. So very important to put some some grease there. Going to oil all the pivot point like we did. I'm going to do on the other side oil the jewel there because I will not get access after to this one. So just oiling the jewels while I'm at it. Here we have the setting lever that I'm just putting in place. And you see that I'm still using this, um, this rusty stem. And actually for the video, like the stem is pretty easy to change. Even when the, when the watch is finished, you just need to open the watch, release the stem and uh, put a new one that you need to adjust. Like I did some video where I uh, adjusted the stem, but actually it's, it's, it's the stem is on order. It was late. So, and I wanted to finish uh, the, the video. Um, so yeah, for, for the video, I did not replace the stem. Obviously I will do it. I will do it uh, off camera, but yeah, for this video, um, yeah, I use, uh, I use a stem that is very rusty and uh, a new one will take place a bit later on on, uh, on this watch. Okay, just putting the spring, remember, which is keeping like one of the wheel under tension, which is, yeah, quite a, a different design, I say. Like, uh, it's not something that you see very often. Okay, looks like it's in place. Just checking. And I can put the wheel. And you see the wheel as well as four holes, which is probably to get access to the jewels, which is underneath. And you see there again, you see a hole, like just above the jewels. 
But yeah, I prefer to lubricate them before putting the parts. It's a lot easier. And uh, yeah, because access is not that easy through this uh, small gap there. Okay, just checking if the keyless work is working. Yeah, looks good there. Just put some grease again. Okay, so we're gonna move to the other side and um, we're gonna first oil the jewels that we did on uh, on the can on the dive side. Sorry, we can put the pallet forks. That's the only two steps to do on a, on a mechanism to see if it's working. Putting the pallet fork and putting the balance assembly. So again, just going to align the pallet fork like we did with the train of wheel. And when it is, we're gonna secure. Just checking there. It just fell in place. Yeah, that's good. We can uh, secure it with a screw and by adding a tiny bit of power in a watch, don't need to do a lot, we should see the pallet fork click. Yeah, it's clicking. So it means the power is coming to the pallet fork, so that's good. And the last step to see if the movement wants to start is to put the balance assembly. So just gently going to put it down. Oh, wow, it started immediately, yeah. And it's uh, not bad. I can see like uh, when it's beating, like the, it doesn't look too slow or with uh, low amplitude. So that's promising. We see we put it later on uh, on a time grapher and uh, we'll see the difference with when it came in. You remember with the amplitude on 170, but that looks, uh, that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to assemble the calendar uh, mechanism with this hour wheel. You see with some teeth on top, like, that looks strange. And this as well, with the jewel in the middle, uh, looks, looks like a very different design. So let's see how it works. Try to move it, but it gets stuck there. I cannot go any further, like it gets stuck on a flat. And actually I managed to align the teeth at the right spot and look, it turn, it doesn't engage anymore. Turn again, it doesn't engage anymore. That's a, a very unique design for, for, for to drive a calendar mechanism, but yeah. It works, yeah, it's uh, another way to do it. So that's pretty interesting. Okay, just put back the date jumper underneath. And now I'm just going to put this big plate on top, which is holding all the parts together, the calendar, the calendar plate and the calendar ring, obviously, which is kept in place with these two screws. And uh, yeah, we need to the jumper there, the spring for the jumper, just to make sure the jumper is an intention. And let's see if we can change the date. Yeah, you saw, it's just jumped there. Okay, let's make, make it turn again. This time it does nothing. And on the next, it should jump. Yes, perfect. That work. Okay, so the calendar is done. We can put back the dial on the, on the, on the mechanism. Just press it in place gently. There we go. Just securing it in place with tightening the dial fit screw. And let's see if the date is jumping. Yeah, we saw it jumping. Let's make it jump again. Always better to check. Yeah, that looks good. So what I do, I just make the, uh, the, the, the date jump, sorry. And uh, I'm going to align the hand to 12 o'clock because when the date is jumping, it's always at midnight. So now it's aligned. I'm just going to press this beautiful. I love this hand with like the broad arrow and uh, the loom inside, which has got a bit of, uh, of patina. The hour indicator, which is like kind of uh, greenish and this orange uh, hour mark is beautiful, beautiful. Doing the same on the minute hand there, just pressing it in place. Just checking if it's aligned. Yeah, it looks good for the, between six and 12. And let's see if the date is jumping. Well, perfect. It's jumping like less than three minutes before midnight. More than happy with this. I like to do it between plus 10 and minus 10 around midnight. So plus or minus three is more than enough for me. Okay, so let's now focus on the case. First, I'm going to clean it now in an ultrasonic machine. Now it's cleaning to remove any uh, dirt on the, on the case. I'm just going to remove the little crown there, the, which is guard with this Orotech tool there that I used to push it out because I want to give a quick polish to the case. Uh, I'm not going to replate it. First I'm polishing the crystal here uh, because I want to keep the original crystal. It's uh, a special shape. We go just pushing some polishing compound there. 
and polishing gently the, the crystal until I remove all the scratches. And the same, I'm going to do a very light polishing because obviously this is uh, chrome plating the, and uh, you see the plating is a bit off, but I don't want to replate it. Just to give it a bit of a shine on, uh, on the watch and to remove all the tiny little uh, scratches. It's not a very deep uh, polishing, but just gently to give it a shine and a nice, and a nice finish. Okay, so when it's done, you have uh, you can put the like I said with the same tool. I'm gonna put this little crown tube in place, just pressing it inside the movement, inside the case. Sorry. There we go. Perfect. And I'm gonna reput put back in place the crystal that I just polished. So for this, I use my crystal press from Bergeon. Just put it in place. Always put a piece of plastic there on top to protect, just to make sure it doesn't get scratched, doesn't get anything during the during the assembly process. Need to be centered there. And with the wheel, I'm going to turn the wheel and lower it down until I press the crystal in the in the case. And when it's done, you can release the pressure and check if everything is okay. Okay, so let's talk about the bezel. You remember the bezel? It was glued and uh, there was no spring in it. So I said, okay, I cannot find a spring because it's uh, not a very famous model. So I said, I'm going to make one myself. So I just bought some uh, spring material on, uh, on the internet, on Amazon, to be, <laughs> to, be enough, to be fair. And I'm just shaping there a spring, that, uh, the kind of spring that you can see normally on bezel. So I'm going to put one, going to adjust it the best I can, and uh, fit the bezel on top, and hopefully the bezel will click. It took me quite a few attempts, actually, because the first time I do it, it took me quite a lot of attempts to, to find the, the, to the right shape and the right length of the model. So I did uh, several springs and just moved them as well and uh, modeled them the way I needed to, to fit. But actually, I was very, very happy, but, and I, I managed to do it, yes. So I did this little spring, and at one point, click. Like you see, now it's working perfectly, like turning with a tiny bit of friction. Perfect, yeah. So now that the case is done, just going to put the movement and this beautiful die back in the case. Put this, uh, the winding stem. Like I said, I will change it later. This one is uh, rusty, but for the purpose of this video, I will just uh, put it back on just to assemble the watch fully. Put the ring. Put a new o-ring. Remember the old one was pretty dirty and old, so I put a new one with some uh, some molycot grease on it, just to make sure the it it help even more with uh, to being watertight. There we go. It's in place, and we can close the case back of this beautiful watch and see which kind of result we will get on the time grapher. I'm very impatient to know which kind of result. But first, I'm going to demagnetize the watch. And here is the result on the time grapher. You can see the amplitude went a lot higher, almost 100 degrees more, like an, uh, around 270. Uh, the watch is gaining a few seconds a day, so I'm more than happy with that. And the bit error went down to 0 0.3, which was at almost 3 milliseconds, which was very high. So very, very, very happy with the result on a, on a time grapher. Now we have a watch which is running perfectly. And as well, look on my wrist, which is looking very nice. I love this color, the orange, the green, the, the patina on the, on the dial and on the hands. So I hope you like the video and I see you next time for my next project. Bye bye.